Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. Uh, I missed last week because I was freaking out about the whole pandemic situation. I'm still freaking out about it, but life goes on. I hope you're doing well and staying safe out there. So a lot of people have been asking me about the level editor in the game. Uh, I built the level editor for two reasons. One, I needed a way to make levels. <laughs> and two, I wanted to give players a tool to create and share their own levels from within the game. So let's jump in and first of all, just give you a tour of the level editor itself. Then I'll walk through some of the code to explain how it does some of the things that it does. I've spent the last few days cleaning up and improving the UI and adding a lot of little quality of life improvements. It was a chore. I knew I needed to do it and I've been putting it off. Uh, the level editor was already functional, but I needed to take it past the finish line. Uh, I revamped the user interface. If you haven't seen the old version, then trust me, this version is much better. All of the panels are visible at all times, and the toolbar now has every function uh, and explains clearly what each button does. I'm writing documentation for the level editor now, and that'll connect to the help button. Another thing I did was improve the UI for connecting signals between objects. The old way worked. Uh, but it was pretty manual, required typing in IDs. This new method allows you to do the whole thing with the mouse. It's much faster, much more intuitive. I also added some juice with an animation and a new sound effect when placing objects. Uh, and I added this cool hologram shader for object previews. When you select an object, a hologram attaches itself to the cursor so you can see exactly where it will be placed. The hologram also snaps to nearby walls to make placement faster. Before you had to guess and make adjustments. Now you can see exactly where the object will be placed so the guesswork is removed. So let's look at how all of this works. First, let's look at the main game scene. This is the scene where the game is actually played. It has some UI, but it's mostly empty because the level data is loaded dynamically. Uh, level data is loaded into the level node. Everything else you see here is UI, like uh, the score, the speed run timer, out of fuel warning, and the level editor scene. Uh, so you can see the editor scene here. In Gravity Ace, the entities are all loaded into the level node. Entering the editor doesn't pause the game. It looks like it's paused, but it's not. What happens is a global mode variable is changed and all of the entities in the game check that to see what they should be doing. If the mode is play, then they behave normally. If the mode is edit, then they don't move, they don't shoot, and they don't die. Here's an example. This turret has code for aiming and shooting at the player, but when the game is in edit mode, it doesn't shoot and it can't die. One approach to building levels would be to use placeholders for all of the entities. Then when the level is loaded, I'd replace all of the placeholders with actual gameplay entities. Uh, but I don't want to do that because I thought it would be more fun to have everything look just like it does in-game. I was right, but it does complicate things a little. Uh, for example, take a look at how I select and move things around in the editor. Every entity in the game is a physics body, either a rigid body 2D, area 2D, or static body 2D. Moving physics bodies isn't so straightforward because they're part of a physics simulation and they don't have any UI controls for drag and drop. So I wrote my own selection and drag and drop code that works with physics bodies. I use the unhandled input callback so that buttons and other GUI controls get to consume inputs first. Any unhandled inputs land here. I check which objects the mouse cursor is touching or nearby by doing queries directly against the physics server. The physics server has a lot of useful methods for querying it based on points, shapes, and raycasts. Here I'm returning the object that is touching the mouse pointer. Then I do some more queries using circle shapes to find the nearest wall. If I find a wall nearby, I can then find the normal and the intersection point of the normal and the wall. That's how I get objects to snap to walls in the correct orientation. Then I have a ton of code here for handling different interactions based on mouse input and the object the cursor is touching. Uh, that's how objects are selected with a single click, drag and drop, rotating, modifying polygons, and more. Next, let's look at the property system. Godot has a lot of really great code introspection features that allows the code to read itself. That is, Godot Engine has methods that let you see what variables you've defined for an object. For example, getPropertyList is a method that returns a list of custom properties that have been defined for any object. HasMethod is another one I use a lot to tell if an object has a particular method, so I know if I should call it or not. Let's look at the turret again. Here's the code. Notice how it has these export variables. See how each one has a type, and some of them have a range? 
the editor scans those variables to build the property inspector. This code iterates through the properties of the selected object. First, the code clears the property inspector. Then it calls a method for each of the exported variables. Uh, the add field method takes that property and builds the UI dynamically for each variable that it finds. Then when the UI controls are manipulated, the resulting values are copied back into the original object. Signals are just a slightly more complicated version of the same idea. Each signal is stored in an array in the originating object. When a signal is connected to another entity, the code stores the target entity and the action to call on that entity. Each entity that can be targeted in this way has a special method called getTriggerCodeList, and that returns a list of actions that can be called on this entity. And it has another method called Trigger that actually invokes the action. So when I connect a signal in the editor, I can choose a target entity and trigger code. Those are saved in an array. Later, when the entity is instantiated, an actual signal is connected from that entity to the target's trigger method, and it passes the action code as a parameter. Okay. Saving levels. This is actually pretty simple. Godot has a class called config file that handles the file format, loading, and saving. It's basically a class for making any files, uh, key value pairs organized into sections. I create an instance of config file. I set global level properties first, like gravity strength. Then I iterate through each of the entities in the game. For each entity, I iterate through its properties and I store the ones I need in the file position, rotation, uh, the polygon shape for walls, and all of the public exported variables that appeared in the inspector. They're all stored in the file and written to disk. Loading levels is a little more complicated, but it's basically saving in reverse. First, I load in all the global level properties. Then I iterate through each of the entities in the file and instantiate each one into the game. After each entity is created, I assign all of its properties back to it. Finally, I connect all the signal properties by creating actual signals to link the source entity to the target's trigger method. The editor and all of its components is somewhere around 3,000 lines of code. I can't talk through it all, but I hope this overview has been fun and useful. It was pretty fast, so please let me know if you have questions. YouTube comments aren't a great place for lengthy discussions, so go to gravityace.com and click the link to join the Discord server. I'm happy to answer any questions you guys have. That's it for now. Please tell everyone you know that Gravity Ace is launching this spring 2020. You can find a link to wishlist Gravity Ace on gravityace.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time and stay safe out there, guys.